A lot of my identity is, you know, I'm a cricketer. And the first wicket for Stella Campbell. Congratulations and well done. And when we went for a scan and there was a disc bulge um, in my L4, I think, that's sort of when surgery was put on the card. Oh, yes! And the ball after the power play finishes. You miss, I'm going to hit. Ultimately, you know, I want to be more than that. Reach out and, and ask for help and, um, you know, that's sort of essentially what I did. I want to dive into um, the part of the podcast now, which has become a consistent theme over the course of the last couple of weeks, where we ask the same five questions to every guest who comes on the show, always five unique answers. And it's almost like the perfect conclusion to any great conversation. It's always a great trailer for some people who may be hearing this before they've heard the full episode, because we release this separately too. Mm -hmm. So I dive into those five with you, Relatively rapid fire, but we always extend them out a little bit. Um, the first question is, if you could recommend one book or one podcast to someone listening, what would it be? Okay. Um, I recently read a book uh, by Chura Pitt. So she was the um, ultra marathon runner um, in the Kimberley who I think faced burns of 65% of her body. Yeah, wow. um, so I recently read one of her books, um, one of her newer ones that she wrote uh, during the pandemic, um, it's called Happy, and um, I stumbled across it. Uh, someone mentioned it in a podcast I think I was listening to, and um, I bought the book and read it and absolutely loved it. Mm. And I think, you know, at a time when it was really hard to find happiness, um, you know, everything sort of felt like a challenge. It was really cool that you know you could flip that and find little joys in life. And um, yeah, I really loved how the book was written and um, something you know that I think isn't spoken about enough and I think it's really cool that she sort of tried to bring that happiness back and it's it's a really cool book. Did she speak about her experience with the Burns or had she done that in previous books? Yeah, she'd done that in previous books. I'm actually not sure how many she's written, but I think she's got a few books out. I think that, I, that was her most recent one. So she didn't sort of speak about her burn experience. But yeah. again, that's probably another one. Because um, isn't she just an incredible human being? Absolutely. Yeah. In she's awesome. She's done so much, you know, obviously the Burns sort of when she started, um, you know, to become a known person. But since mm. then, she's done so many amazing things and it's, yeah, really inspirational for probably most people out there. Bloody oath, that might be next on my list because I've been looking for a new mm. audio book, so I might have to get around that. Mm. Second question is, what's one skill that you'd recommend mastering that significantly improved your life? Um, uh, I would say probably organisation yep. um, and time management. As an athlete, we have a lot of things going on in our lives whether it's you know trainings or external commitments um there's always a lot going on so I, I carry my planner with me everywhere um and I write down everything because as I said I'm can be forgetful at times so it's um that's probably been one thing that saved me a lot um just having that and knowing you know what I've got coming up and knowing that I can plan out my months and be on top of everything Definitely, I love that. Oh, that's something I need to work on. Yeah. I'm like notoriously two to ten minutes late to everything and I'm really working hard on it at the moment and it's it's just maybe me just being – it's not lazy because I'm always up and ready mm -hmm. and conscious but I think I just get caught up doing things because I don't plan enough. Like mm. I'm always trying to oh, – I need to do that too so I'll kind of do that in the middle of doing something else and it's definitely something I need to be better at, organisation. The third one is – and probably I know a sense of what your answer will be here. One challenge in your life that's required the most growth to overcome. Yeah, okay. So that that's probably at the moment with this surgery. I think um, I've been incredibly lucky up until now to sort of not have any time out of the game, essentially, uh, longer than sort of a couple of weeks. So being out of training for 12 weeks has been a challenge and something that I've had to wrap my head around. Um, and yeah, like we spoke about finding, you know, a new purpose and being able to navigate the path of, you know, I can't work on myself as a cricketer right now. So how can I work on who I am away from cricket has probably been something that's, you know, I've 
I feel like I've already grown so much in the past six weeks. Mm. Um, just being able to acknowledge where I am and, and where I want to be um, has really been a cool challenge. And yeah, something that I knew, I sort of knew going into, I would sort of be challenged, but um, it's really cool to be on the path right now and, and discovering sort of where I want to go and where I want to get to. Amazing. So good to hear. All righty. So the fourth question is what's a daily habit or a ritual that forms a part of your life and sets you up for success? Yeah, so for me, that's probably eating breakfast. Mm. I feel like that's something that I do every day and it really sets me up to be energized and be able to get through the day. So that's something that our nutritionist as well is really passionate about is getting in a good breakfast. Um, I used to be really... Um, iffy about breakfast especially on match days I sort of you know get the feeling of a bit sick in my stomach or something like that but nowadays I love breakfast and um, yeah it really sets me up for the day. So obviously the cricketers go to breakfast is wheat bix is that your go-to year round or what does that look like? Uh, Yes I'm pretty seasonal with my breakfast so um, at the moment it's a bit cold so I'm leaning towards a bowl of oats in the morning I feel like that that's something that warms me as well as fuels me so um, I do do wheat bix maybe in the summer but uh, yeah at the moment it's oats. I love it. Last question and as I always say probably the most I think the most important part of the podcast it's a beautiful way to leave off a great conversation and to leave the audience with a message and that is if you could share one message with the world and encourage them to act on it, what would that be? Um, I'd probably say something that I've sort of grown up with is um, treating people how you wish to be treated. Mm. I think it's something super basic, but something that we probably don't you know, recognize as much. And I think it's something that has been drilled into me as a kid is, you know, being respectful and just being, you know, grateful and humble is something that I've grown up with so um yeah that's probably something that I would say you know and I'd try and get more people to do especially you know in in tough times you know like a pandemic or you know there's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now that you know is you know not always happy and not always enjoyable and tough experiences that people are dealing with uh i think you know if we can always sort of be kind to each other and just try and you know uplift one another and treat each other with respect i feel like that's something that's really small but it goes a long way to helping other people yeah that empathy and kindness is so important right hey this has been an amazing conversation i really appreciate you coming on i appreciate you opening up and sharing i'm so glad we connected because we've had some great conversations not even just here Um, but over your Instagram and I'm going to make sure that all of Stella's info like her social links and basically everywhere they can connect with you are in the show description so make sure you head across and have a look at that and I guess I'll be able to keep updated on your progress to getting back on the field yeah definitely and thanks Brad for having me I'm I'm so fortunate to have connected with you and so lucky to have found you and and all your stuff it's been you know really cool for me and um, yeah super grateful that we were able to have this chat The pleasure's all mine. Thank you so much. Make sure you guys follow, subscribe. You know, it's not a secret. Share it around. Tell the world. Um, We love that we get to connect with new people and have positive impact on listeners and viewers. So please share it around. Give it some love. And we'll see you next time. See ya.